Green salutations, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Devin, and welcome to my tutorial on responsive UI design within your games. Now, before we dive too deeply into the tutorial itself, I'd like to take a moment to talk to you a little bit about what responsive design actually is. So the first place I'm going to go is I'm actually opening up the Game Maker um, or, you know, the YoYo -Yo Games website here. And the reason why I've got this pulled up is because I want to show you something kind of cool. So we're looking at the page here. We got a couple of Java, please. We got a couple of things laid out. Now, here's what, here's what responsive design is. So if I go ahead and take this and start making it smaller, notice how the image is just kind of repositioned and... You know, everything's kind of like stacked on top of each other now. This is kind of what the website would look like on a tablet, for instance. As you can see, the positioning changes based on, based on this being on a desktop instead of on a tablet. Now, we're not quite going so far as positioning, but we are making your game's menus responsive using this tutorial. We're, we're going to make it so that they're, they're width will be able to adjust accordingly, or basically their, their positioning using two scripts, responsive underscore X and responsive underscore Y. Now I have everything contained within this responsive UI game maker file here. And for the example, we actually, I've actually created an alert box so that you can call a script and it will show an alert message actually in your game and then the the player or the user will be able to hit any button in order to close out of that and move on back into the game so let's take a look at the project here now first and foremost i actually have my init camera script right here you can actually i'll, I'll go ahead and link in the description but i actually talk more about this script in another video now do note that these scripts will work whether you got cameras enabled slash views or not. So you got that going on there for you. Now you also, here's the two scripts, responsive underscore X and responsive underscore Y. We'll get a little bit deeper into these and how these work um, later in the tutorial. But these, these are your bread and butter. These are what's going to allow you to start positioning your UI in your game so that they adapt to whatever screen your game happens to be running on. I do have one more little bonus script here called responsive underscore text. Basically what the script tries to do is it tries to resize the text based on the size of the screen. It can be a very useful tool, but I'll show you an alternative source that might be a little bit better than this. I, I highly recommend checking out where in the tutorial. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and run the game so that you can see what's going on. Now, as you can see, we have here an alert. This is room one. Press any key to continue. So if I go ahead and hit Y, for instance, okay, it closes. So cool. We have an, we have an alert that pops up. Now, how does that work? So if I actually dive into my room here and I just simply have room or one and I hop into my creation code I have a script script r underscore ru underscore alert now the ru just simply signifies that this is part of the tutorial so you can actually name this wherever you want what's in the script you might ask well let's take a look so here's object underscore alert basically here's the script now all this script does is it simply creates this object and then passes along the arguments that you give it into the object for it to display. So if I go ahead and take a look here at the create event, so, you know, or title, or, or description, whatever, whatever content that you want for the alert. And as you can see, if we take a look at it here, right now it just asks for the, the message, as you can see right there, but the title is optional. And you can actually see in the script here how I set up an, an optional value, which is all part, basically this line right here. Title is nothing by default, but you know if you do define title, it goes ahead and it manages all that for you. So that's how the alert message work. But let me let me do some kind of interesting here. 
So if I just go ahead and run this, as you can see, it uses up a pretty good chunk of the width of the, of the screen. If I go ahead and uh, close this out though, I'm going to set the, the width of the game to 300 pixels instead of, four, instead of 600 pixels. We're, we're cutting the width in half. We're going to make it look more like the width of a phone. As you can see, our message, the width automatically adjusted to the width of our, of our window, which is absolutely fantastic, very useful. And you can make this as small as you want, and it will adjust in order to match that. Now, how did we do this? How does it work? Now, before I dive into the scripts, I want to kind of jump over here for a second to talk about exactly how the scripts work. So let's say that you have a game, or your window, basically. And let's say it's 600 pixels wide by 480 pixels tall. Now, what responsive underscore x does is it splits this up into 12 sections, basically. You know, kind of like a grid, if you will. So if you pass in uh, 2 into responsive underscore x, it's going to put your x right there. If you pass in 4, it's going to put it in, like, right there. Now, why, can't, why don't you just, you know, put in, you know, like, 300 or something for where you want the x value to be? Well, this is where the magic comes in. So this can be 300 pixels wide by 480 pixels tall, but it still splits it into 12 exact pieces, basically. So 2 would be right here, and 4 would be right here you know, would automatically adjust and squish itself to position it based on the width of the screen. So that's where the responsive functions are really, really handy. So let's go ahead and dive into exactly how these responsive works, responsive functions work, and how to take advantage of them. So I'm just going to hop into the draw event for our object underscore alert here, where I've got the... Uh, responsive x and responsive y scripts use quite a bit actually so i'm going to go ahead and zoom in here so i'm not going to talk too much about everything down here you can kind of pick this apart at your leisure i'm mostly going to talk about the the box that's being drawn because really that's the the box is the meat and potatoes of of how this thing is positioned so if i go ahead and run this again the box that we're talking about right here is just the white box that is being drawn right there. So for our, for our x1 value for drawing this rectangle, we have responsive underscore x 0.5. Now the cool thing about this is you don't have to put in an integer. You can put in decibel numbers and it will still work just fine for you. Now, and, and, but of course too, you know, you can put in like negative one and negative one will actually position it off screen or 13 well off screen to the left but then 13 will position it off screen to the right you know it's it's all numbered one you, know, you can put in one through 12. so zero would be all the way to the left 12 would be all the way to the right six is the exact center and why 12 because it's just such an easy number to break down you know like Three would be 25% over. You, you can break it down as much as you want. But as you can see for the alert box, I set responsive X, you know, the first X value. Let's actually go ahead and just draw this out here. So, so here's our view. So our responsive X is 0.5. We also want our Y, which is 4. So 4 is probably about right here, and 0.5 is about right there. So we got that position. Then responsive x is 11.5, which means we're actually in half a spot. But then for our responsive uh, y, we got the exact same spot, but then plus 100 pixels. And basically what that does, that allows us to set our box at a specific height. And what we've done using the responsive functions is that we've put in a rectangle that is adaptable to the width of the of the screen. So now with what I've told you, you can pretty much go ahead and start playing with this 
and fully take advantage of this of this system. In the next part of the tutorial, I'm going to dive in a little bit deeper as to on how this this system actually works. It is really simple. Um, you can feel free to stick around if you want, but otherwise, feel free to fast forward to the to the end of the video where I point out a couple of resources for you. So. Here's responsive underscore x, which is very much like responsive underscore y, so I'll just go over this one. All it really does is it, it gets the width, or in the case of uh, y, it gets the height. It gets the dimension of the screen, and then it gets the uh, position of the camera, and then it takes that and just divides it by 12. And then it returns the fraction, or the number that you've uh, entered, multiplied by or it, it gets the fraction and then it multiplies that by the number that you've entered. So say your width is 1200 pixels, just to make it easy. That divided by 12 equals 100. And if you multiply that by two, that's 200. So it will put it, um, you know, basically you're, you're two width over at that point. So really simple script. Um, easy to break down, and you know you could even take it and modify it if you really want it. Now the uh, the responsive text is a little bit more involved. I definitely think that there's a lot that I could improve here. I'm not going to dive too deep into this, but I'll dive into a little bit of how it's used. So something that's very important to set up with your responsive design is what's called breakpoints. So, and you use, and, P, and this is used in CSS when designing web pages. So, if the view is, if, if the width is smaller than 300 pixels, then we set the breakpoint to, or we, we basically adjust the size of the text down by, or by 0.1. And as you can see for like the alert tile responsive underscore y, in this particular argument, you set the, the height of the line, which essentially determines the, the size of the text. So I set it to 0.5 by default, but if it's a smaller, if it's a much smaller screen, I make, I make the text smaller so that we can fit a little bit more content in there. So that's basically how that works. And as you can see, I use the responsive functions to position the text under the screen. So, you know, here I put it exactly in the center. And then the Y, you know, once again, that, that base value of responsive Y of 4. But then I put, I, you know, put down plus 15, 50, A5 to position the other text elements um, at different um, static values down the box. That way we can still keep it within the box. And that's pretty much it. A um, couple of other things that I got going down, going on in this object is, so it's created, can destroy equals false, and then it sets an alarm for 10 steps, and then it sets can destroy equals true. So if you press any key, it will destroy the, it will, it will destroy the message. You know, that's, that's your whole press any key to, to continue. But we want a delay on that. Otherwise, if you initiate the... Basically, you got to give the, the user time to actually read the message so that they don't actually accidentally just close it out. In fact, that this timer could probably be extended from like 10 steps to probably more like 120. So, you know, that, that's that. That's that there for you. And of course, this whole thing is controlled via this script right here. So anywhere in the, in the game, all you have to do is run this script, and it throws up a message for you. And that message is whatever you specify in the script. So anyways, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, not, not much else to this system. Uh, just, just go ahead and take your responsive X and responsive Y, and just use that for positioning your items around on the screen. And that, and when you combine that with your uh, your draw functions, you can actually really start to scale and move stuff around. Now, I would like to talk a little bit about some resources that are out there to help you further get more out of this tutorial here. Now, number one, I'm putting this up here. So, scaling for devices. 
Uh, this was posted by Mark Alexander in the, on the Yo-Yo Games website. This is a fantastic article that talks about scaling your game. Uh, there's, there's a whole bunch of things to consider when you're scaling your game, and responsibil- the responsiveness of the elements is just one facet. So this is, this is a good read. This is a good thing to check out. I also got some marketplace assets that I found. So text fit box. This actually might be very, very useful. You, you actually might want to consider using this script instead of my responsive underscore text because something tells me that this individual here worked out a, a lot more than what I was able to work out as far as scaling the text within a box. So, you know, if you're willing to put up like two bucks and you're supporting a fellow developer, by the way, and that's less than McDonald's Happy Meal. So don't be afraid to help this guy out. You know, give this a shot. It, it looks like it's really cool. And I think he's gotten some uh, pretty good reviews. No reviews yet. Hey, maybe you're the fir- you can be the first one to leave a review. The other thing, too, is so next is the display scaler. I actually got, the, I actually got it the set edge up engine. On this actually Game looks Maker really cool. 21 so you can reviews has gotten a lot of good this. reviews. Um, the only problem is that this is for three Game Maker Studio 1.4, so that may or may not work for you. Um, looking at the uh, looking at the preview here, there does appear to be a lot going on in this, so it may or may not be right for you. Uh, but it might be it. It's free, so you might as well go ahead and check it out. The other thing too is. I have everything that we just talked about set up as an asset on the Game Maker Marketplace for $3.99. However, this asset is free with the option to buy. You, you, you can only buy if you want to support my work. So, depending on how you want to nab this, I got everything right here in Pastebin. I also have the very project that I just worked off of in this tutorial on GitHub that you can just go ahead and download if you want. So this asset is free with the option to buy. Anyways, that's, that's how this works. Hopefully this has been useful to you. I know that, uh, I know once I worked all this out, which I actually, actually let me show this to you. This is kind of cool. So this is actually an app that I have on the Google Play Store uh, by Morte. And I built this app using this engine basically i i develop i developed this engine because of uh i want a play i apologize I should have had this ready there we go so i actually developed this system while making this app and i built this entire ui using those functions and as you can see it didn't come out look, looking half bad and it adapts really nicely across different devices Anyways, uh, that's about it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. Otherwise, uh, yeah, take care, keep at it, and if you have any issues, let me know. Bye.